party people, you are listening to Crossplay, our video game podcast here at the Whatnots. It is Saturday, a- April 10th, 2021, and coming up on today's show, E3 is officially happening as a digital event this June. The Last of Us, yes, you heard you heard me right, The Last of Us is apparently getting a remake, and Deathloop has been unfortunately delayed. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Gino Viteri. What's up, you beautiful people? Welcome to the podcast. And a- 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 Alan Busby. Hello on this stormy, rainy day. Yo, and Ignacio Rojas. Hey, how's it going, people? Going pretty good. It's raining up where you are. Alan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We went disc golfing like very early this morning and it started to sprinkle. And then I got home and messed with settings and stuff. And then, yeah, just a torrential downpour okay. just just we, hit. We had that yesterday. Very beautiful so over the here. Storm must have Which is super cool, though. Yeah. Coast. No, that's that's fine. We're I'm in spring allergy season. It can rain. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Uh, it is kind of yeah. nice when, it, when it's raining out there. Well, the rain, the rain knocks all the pollen like lower to the ground, so then it doesn't. Yeah, that's it. You know, get all, oh yeah, get you all. know pollen. So when I lived in Miami, pollen wasn't medicine. really a thing because we're yeah. mainly like you know next to the yeah, beach. That's it. But here, now that I'm in Georgia, pollen like absolutely covers your vehicles. And yeah. I had well the, the first day I was like, what is all this green stuff on my car? Oh, what's really? going what's going on here? And someone explained to me that it was pollen and I was like, what the heck really? Like that's, that's a why thing. It's so bad. It's been crazy. They're yeah. all like uh allergies. No, I've yeah. never seen pollen like that. It's freaking intense, yeah. yeah it it's gets just wild. Like this light dusting of it's, like it... yellow green powder. And it's like if you uh-huh. like, if you're a little allergic to that stuff, you don't want to go anywhere near it because it it will mess you up. <laughs> Just yeah. outside, yeah. You <laughs> yeah. don't want to go outside because it's everywhere. <laughs> it's in the air. My gosh, it's wild. Oh, uh, we don't have it. We allergic. don't have it that thick, but it's it's really humid, so the air is like really thick here, and just because we'll have really high humidity, so the thicker the air is and everything else with the pollen, just yeah. so yeah. like, hey, spring season, let's go outside and go disc golfing for a couple hours. Are you saying disc golf? Okay. Disc yes. golf. Yeah, Alan's been saying disc golfing for a while, and I don't, I have never I asked. I, I thought you were saying what, what disco is... and then something else, but. It's disc, no, disc no, golfing. Disc, disc golf. Disc golf. This golfing, but with discs. Yeah, it's oh. like yes. golf, but you play it with basically a, fr- with discs. a, fr- a frisbee. But, ah, it's not a, but it's not a I frisbee. Know, I know, though. but it's, but, it's yeah, the same but... basic thing. <laughs> It sounds yeah. like an extreme version of golf, yeah. like an extreme sports version of golf, I golf would say. Golf would be so uh, much better uh, no. if it was more of an extreme sport and you could do, do stuff like that. Yeah. It would be so much more fun. And not the they same. could, like, one of the things that they could do is club each other, right. you know? <gasps> like, hit the ball, but then also try to prevent the other players from hitting the ball the by clubbing them. needs those, like, inflatable thunder sticks, right, that you see at, like, basketball games and yeah, stuff? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, like, 40 years, golf is going to be extremely violent. Watch. It's just, <laughs> just, just going like, to be so violent. <laughs> I just like the fact that this entire time, Ignacio, whenever I mention it, I just like I just like the fact that Ignacio's like, man, Alan sure does go yeah. disco a lot. <laughs> yeah. Alan, the disco king. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, I, like I you know things. what? It's we may, we might be in twenty twenty one, but we're still living in the, you know, the disco age. Yeah. We're still, it's still happening. There's always yeah. time for yeah, disco. <laughs> kind of no, no rollerblades though. I don't even know how oh, to rollerblade. Oh, I've never rollerbladed. No. Ah, good stuff. Me either. Me well, let's either. get into some video games. Skate, yeah. but... Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Do it indeed. Alan, let's start with you, because you were absent last week. Oh, man. Well, there's... So you're probably noticing um, in the games I've I've uh, played that there's a game omitted from this. But Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter, yes. Oh, so I'll no. just go through the list. I don't, I, I don't have too much oh. to say. So I'm back on a trophy binge where I'm trying to level up rapidly, so... 
I booted up Sundered. I bought it last year on a sale and I finally played it. That good old Metrovania just injecting it straight into my veins. And it's mm-hmm. amazing. Platinum did. took me like four and a half days. Uh, Man Eater, PlayStation yeah. Trophies Brian on Twitter recommended this game to me because it was free a couple months ago and it's a great game. Yeah. And it's it's an it's Assassin's Creed, but for sharks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfect way to actually, describe it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I just started The Witness because you know it's one of those uh like play at home initiative games. Great. And wow, it is it is terrible. <laughs> no, it is great. God, that game is God, fucking amazing. I, I I fucking hate this game. Well, you gotta think about what kind of games I like. To I play, almost you know I mean? don't oh, want to like. I played it for like an hour without anything and i was like this game is to me it has no direction it's confusing it's boring as fucking nails i was like all right we're i was (laughs) i was like all right (laughs) screw it we're pulling up we're pulling up a guide it's on my trophy list i'll just use the guide i'll platinum it and then i'll delete it and it'll never enter my headspace ever again (laughs) and i'm watching I'm watching video guys to play them it, and man, I've never felt so dead. And I've never felt so dead. I'll, in my I'll so agree I'm, with you I'm, in saying that it's not for everyone, right? Like yeah. it's it's very yes. much like if you <sighs> like puzzle games that are like philosophical in the storytelling and environmental and stuff like that it's great for that stuff but yeah if you're not in t- into yeah, that oh, man. it's just no. gonna be like what the fuck is this is this an annapurna game i don't remember I, 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 let me see if i, I can know, I like it has that I, vibe you I'm know it has that vibe between you guys because i love puzzle games but i tried out the witness and then uh again i like puzzle games i like challenges i like mental challenges but that was more hey, than I, what i wanted I, to do hey the witness looks very pretty yeah. that's it's got that going for it and that's uh, that it was, was too much work for me it was developed by uh, Thecla Incorporated and published by them, as well yeah. as NVIDIA Lightspeed Studios. Uh, uh, I mean, interesting. Kyle, respect, man. If you like, if you love the witness or like the witness, then like I'm it. happy for you. But, a lot of but love holy, it. holy cow! I almost regret even de- like this game was. This game is completely free, and I don't even want it. <laughs> like, and now wow. it's on your choice for me. You have to finish uh, so, And this will Sony be the last like, hey. podcast that Alan is on. Uh, no. <laughs> Sony was like, hey, here's a free game that's going to cost you nothing. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm fine. It's like going wow. to the store and they give you free samples and you say, and you say, no, thank you. How do you say no to free samples? Yeah. I did. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I won't mention Mad Rat Dead, but I played that on stream on Monday. But I have not played Rise since not this past Monday. The Monday before that, it's been wow. almost two weeks since I booted it up. Bad. It's not that it's bad. I like it. It's just some of the altered mechanics. I don't. They don't really click with me. I don't. So like, I know Gino played Rise because he. I saw him on stream play a little bit. Yeah. And you know, you know the spirit birds that you collect in the hunts to be stronger. Yeah. I could. You could redact that gimmick. I am. I did it like six times, uh-huh. and I am. It. It can go away forever, and I'll be happy. Uh, tell me if you if you if you agree with this, Alan. I feel like this one's a lot easier than World it, it, and, it is. and other ones. I'm not very far. I'm only on uh-huh. Hunter rank two star, but like, I don't even have a great build, and I can kill new monsters in like, in like six minutes. Yeah. It's, it's 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 a lot easier than I yeah. imagined it would be. Yeah. So I feel like this is a this is another like this Monster Hunter specifically is the one that I would recommend for people who have never played Monster Hunter really? over World because it's way quicker. It's quicker. Um, it's quicker. It's easier um, to fight the monsters, and also the the multiplayer component is also. Is, that's sort of what I meant by quicker. See, it's a lot quicker to get into into games with people or so, or have people join your games and stuff like so you that. See, I've I've been thinking of this by not playing it in the bit that I played. This game is somehow a better introduction to Monster Hunter than World. Yeah. But also somehow it's worse than World. Mm-hmm. Because Rise, the thing going for Rise that makes it hands down better than World is its multiplayer aspect that alone mm-hmm. makes it exactly. better but that's that's it the some of the mechanics they've changed 
like the wire bugs, that is not an easy gimmick to master or get into. They don't have that in world. So technically, uh, mechanically speaking, world is a simpler game to get into. And also when you do get into the games, like once you actually get past that barrier to entry, world is a more polished and complete game than Rise. And that's already been an argument all over Twitter that I've been reading and talking to people. And I talked to a guy, Amaze Hobbs. He actually ta- knows a friend that's really that's played all of the series. Rise is not the next complete installment of the franchise. It is what is being dubbed as the 5.5. It's where Capcom yeah. takes mechanics and tries to figure out what's going to work or what's good. And then puts those into a new game, ergo Rise. That way, when they make the next main assignment, like Monster Hunter 6, that's after World, they'll either take some stuff from Rise or drop stuff that didn't work. Yeah. And that's why I think Rise is somehow better, but worse than World that's at the same time. That's kind of what I've been hearing. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, I've, I've actually heard a lot yep. of people say that Monster Hunter World is maybe the better one to get into for new players because it tutorializes you more. Yes. But then... It does mm-hmm. rise. They've like fine tuned the mechanics. So if you've already played Monster Hunter World, you're just like, oh, this is so much better. Yeah. Like, uh, like I, I don't. Well, but yeah. Well, plus World also uh, was the first game to add a lot of really great quality of life improvements. And the biggest one that I know is the whetstone to sharpen your weapon, Gino. Mm-hmm. That is infinite in Rise and World. Those are the only two games. The whetstone is infinite use. You had to go out and grab yeah. items to collect those to make them. So World started making Monster Hunter more accessible. Rise is an experimental game. And to be fair, Rise runs phenomenally on the Switch, but it is not... Surprisingly so, yeah. It's not... It does lack a lot of polish, though. Interesting. Mm-hmm. What, what, uh, the, the mechanics that it is introducing, the, the, wi- the I guess the biggest ones that the I can think bug. about are the Wirebug and the Palamute. Yep. Um, I genuinely enjoy those yes. as uh, diff- as additions to both the way you fight and the way you explore. Um, so the wire bug adds a a lot of yeah, yeah. Uh, different exploration methods and it stuff makes like that. the hunts it makes the hunts too easy though. That's the problem with them. Uh, uh, yeah, that they they could be. That's what I've noticed. That it does it does ma- the game is a lot easier than World than I remember World being. And that is the sole purpose that I would recommend Rise yeah. Over World to beginner players. And the because, Palam- yeah. The pe- really, the last thing I'll give about it, the Palamu is not new to Rise. It was actually in World as an introductory mechanic, but then they made it a full-blown mechanic in Rise. So pa- mm. the Palamu, like, Raider Ride ability is not exclusive to yeah. Rise. It was in World. They just refined it in yeah. Rise. So, yeah. Yeah, and I love it. I mean, I, I love the Palamu. It's so nice having someone... Somebody, uh, a cool looking doctor, right? Uh, but the Palico is number one. I, uh, uh, fuck I mean, the Palico. You're I'm over the uh, Palico. <laughs> and Doug's evolution. Yeah. But I'm having, I'm actually, I'm, I'm a little bit more ahead of you than, uh, Alan, which is surprising. I'm, uh, so. I believe everyone's passed me. I'm still, I haven't even done the first rampage in the hub yet. And I, yeah. I haven't done the final, like the urgent quest of the rank two star. And like, mm-hmm. I, We'll go back eventually, but like I don't care. Yeah. And plus, it's not on PlayStation, so that is like a weird hang up for me. Awkwardly, it's I, definitely I, I, made me. Yeah, it's definitely made me turn on my Switch a lot more, and I, and I got a Pro controller and everything for it. So, uh, I'm I'm enjoying it. I I didn't I didn't put it in my in my games I've played because I haven't. I don't have that many thoughts on it. Uh, it's just it's just fun. It's all it is Monster Hunter, you know? I enjoy yeah, I, it a lot. I, I haven't played enough, but yeah, I hear the post game's also not great. I'll see when I get there. Yeah. When I get there. So But that's yeah. that's all I have been playing. I am level four hundred and ninety two in trophies. Jeez, I leveled up twice dude. in like the last in like the last <clears throat> wow. five days. Wow. Jesus. Nice. I know. I, I don't. <laughs> Real I don't know what my here, level huh? is. That's right. <laughs> I pay no attention. Uh, me either. Attention. I can put, yeah. Alan, what did you say was yours? I am 492. I'm 344. What's Kyle? What's Kyle? I have no idea. I don't know if I can find it. <laughs> Do it. I'm Do probably it. like I think I'm like uh, 516. <clears throat> yeah, I'm over 9,000. I think I'm like 516 around there, yeah. Okay, so Gino uh, is 283. 
Wow. Um, that's what a, what a scrub. <laughs> you have to you have to Kyle sync your 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 save again. Uh, Ignacio. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so Gina is barely above her. Pro gamer. Uh, sync right your here. save, uh, Ignacio. You're probably that's, that's wrong. Right. That's wow. way wrong. That's no, way yeah. maybe you should boot up your PlayStation. You your maybe you should boot up your PlayStation and sync your yeah. trophies and see what you bump up to. Yeah. All right, guys. You know what I've been playing? Yes, I've been playing some Outriders. Oh. Finally got got into it. Was able to log into yeah, it. So been I've been playing. Play. So, I've been playing solo mm -hmm. the entire time, actually. And I think so. I've been watching other people play it as well. Um, you're a pyromancer, right, yes. Kyle? Uh, and I feel like Devastator is probably the best class to play on your own because of, you know, they're technically the tank. Mm -hmm. So uh, they survive damage, very yeah. easily. Yeah. So, uh, and I've, I've found it like that when I've been watching other people play. I've watched uh, Technomancer play. I've and, well, another one that actually I think is, is, is good by themselves is a Trickster because of just the amount of damage See, that they, they do is freaking I would incredible. say yeah. Pyro is is good for playing solo, but Okay, so, so that's 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 what I want you to that's what I kind of want to like know cuz I I thought myself like oh Devastator is definitely the best one to play by himself. That makes but then, sense though cuz if But then the Trickster, tank, yeah. you know, and then does So I don't know, it's I've been having a lot of fun with it. This game is just like so incredibly fun to play. I don't I don't and Agreed. it's surprising to me that it is fun. You know, it's it, this is definitely a game that came out on PS3 and uh, has the story of a PS3 story, yeah. you know, PS3 uh, action shooter story, definitely 100%. But I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it's, it. Like, it feels new, but at the same time, it has, like, this game knows what it is. It knows what it is. Plain and simple. It's not trying to be anything else. It's a... It's a simple, you know, co-op, looter shooter, not live service. You get what you get. There's end game that I haven't gotten to yet, but there's, there's, you know, they have the cool weapons, the legendary, the, the gear, all that kind of stuff. And then just the different skills that you have with all these classes. Uh, I've mainly been playing uh, Devastator. I tried a little bit of Trickster. Uh, Trickster just uh, is so awesome. They're like a, a freaking slow, time controlling assassin. It's so cool. And uh, though there's one skill uh, with the Devastator that I love using so much, mm -hmm. Kyle, where um, you you hold up your hands and you have like this barrier in front of you, and everyone that's shooting at you, all the bullets that are being shot at you, you see them build all up stop there. in the wall. And, yeah, and then after ten seconds, you shoot them all back. And then I that's have awesome. like one of my that's pieces awesome. of gear um, says. You do an extra 50% damage to the people with the most health. So I, I, I walk around the entire battlefield, <laughs> soaking up all the, all, the, all the bullets, and then I get to the tankiest people and just absolutely watch just them drop in front of me after, I, after those 10 seconds. It's so cool and so satisfying doing stuff like that, that, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm having a lot so, of fun with it. So is Outriders not even a brand new game? Yeah, no. No, it's it is, it's it's a new game. It, he means it like it like feels like, game. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, like if this game came out on PS3, uh, when the PS3 was out, it totally fits that era. Oh, you know what I mean? Just, it totally I fits saying, that like, era. You, you the said story's you, not really there. You delivered it. You delivered cheesy. it like it was a PS3 game. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, cheesy. Yeah, exactly. But I'm liking the story too. Like as it develops, they, I'm like, they, yeah, this is pretty. Make you know, it's interesting on the story more than I think some people will want to um because they yeah. it's not just the like very static back and forth shots between you and an npc like they do try to put in these cut scenes where people are talking yeah. and they're trying to spill their heart and all of that stuff and it's just like I, mm -hmm. I think it's a neat idea for a story. I just think it's one of those things where, like, hey, if they really made this, like, a single-player thing, they probably would have gotten to explore it a little bit more. But because it's yeah. this, like, pseudo-online but not really a live service game, yeah. it, it's it's a strange thing. But, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I've, I've been playing as Pyro. um, I think last week I was like, I'm enjoying it, 
but I don't really have much to say yet. Um, and this week, yeah, I'm having a blast. It is a hell of a lot of fun. It's interesting for me to like figure out how to play it and what the best way to do all that stuff is. Um, Cause yeah, it's not the Gears of War cover shooter thing where you can just like sit behind something or or like Division Two. They really want you to go out there yeah. and use your power ups and stuff. Um, exactly. And I have to get used to that. And I'm also like I'm I'm seeing people being like, oh, I'm on like World Tier Twenty Nine, and I'm on World Tier Eighty Two, and I'm just like I'm on World mm-hmm. Tier like three. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah no yeah. it's 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 difficult but th- what they do with the difficulty and the world tiers are actually really neat um and yeah, they are. like yeah it's difficult and if you don't like that you can stay at world tier three or two or w- 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 wherever you want but if you just bump it up every now and then right like you'll start to get more loot mm-hmm. that's a little bit better and then if you're back down on world tier three with that better loot like you'll start to be more powerful and stuff and it's like okay maybe i can mm-hmm. bump it up to the next one a little bit more and and stuff like that and eventually like you just start like yeah. not necessarily getting better you do but like you get better loot and more powerful that it's like oh world tier four yeah psh- I got that. World tier exactly. six so here. I c- what is, c- come. What is world tier? How does it work? It's basically their so, difficult uh, actually, it's, settings. Yeah. Um, oh, so you can pretty much. just move around world tier. You could so change it, 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 yeah. Yeah, so... So it... It... It automatically will increase as the game g- 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 goes on kind of like an exp- mm-hmm. in, in, an experience bar and the higher the world yeah. tier is the better loot that y- 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 that you you get so the game might be getting more difficult but you're also getting more powerful um so it kind of mm-hmm. that balances out there but you can turn it back of like oh i you know world tier five is too much so i i'll i'll stick with world tier four you can stay at that one and play that one the entire time um which is fine but then it's like yeah you're, there's less of a chance that you'll get rare, rare loot and stuff so it's just like you know why don't mm-hmm. you bump that up while you're not at the b- 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 boss so here. it's so so it's literally the Diablo difficulty where the higher the difficulty, the rarer the item drops yeah, become. Exactly. exactly, yeah. That's how it is, exactly. yeah. Yeah, so. It's a Diablo shooter, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fun, <laughs> though. I'm, I, it's, it's like, it, it's, it's good, giving me dumb a lot of fun. FOMO. It's giving me a lot of FOMO in a ton of people play. Yeah. It's worth a try, I mean, if, especially if you have the, you know, the Xbox with the Game Pass that's free, so. Yeah, unfortunately, it is um, in Game Pass on PC. Yeah. Which sucks. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I figure why they do that, but That's a whole lot yeah, of I deal. figured why they did that. But uh, it's definitely worth a try. Uh, so I'm I'm having a lot of fun and with it. So- I'm just a I'm just a normie. I don't I don't play the brand new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play the popular life service games. I'm just a normie. Or maybe I'm not a normie. That's the, that's the weird that thing be. with this game is they keep insisting that it's not a live service game, yet it's always online. Yeah. And it's just like I, I don't oh. understand. Like, why can't <laughs> yeah. I just play this on my own, like a, a, as a solo player? Um, this, yeah. they, they really want you to squat up and and do stuff like that. And they have one thing that I haven't really explored yet since I haven't squatted up yet. I I do want to do that a little bit more once I beat the campaign. Um, but I, they have like a story slider i think is what they called it uh where you can yeah i I think at any point in the game you can just set it to where you want to be in the story Um, oh the thing about that kyle is i tried it it overwrites your save yeah in your in the story yeah so because i tried to go back 
Um, cause so what I did with the world tiers was I I'm I'm at the highest possible at all gotcha, times, yeah. but at, at a boss it got way too hard and I couldn't leave the boss, so I was like, let me lower the world tier so I can finish it, leave out of here, and then find a squad to do world the yeah. to do it at the highest. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so when I beat it, I got my first piece of legendary gear. But it was like five levels lower than me, and it was mm. it was so disappointing because I, I I loved it, and it was too weak for everything I had. Have, but have, have, so have you been what I, modding your your stuff and exploring that? I haven't I haven't done that yet because I haven't been uh, I'm not high enough level to okay. do it. So, yet. like like it I'm not high enough to where it matters to me. Where, yeah. where where are you in, you know so in the game i am now i'm level 18 world tier eight you've unlocked it i'm so, pretty sure no i have it all no doctor. i have it all i know it i i've i've looked at the modding and you all that stuff absolutely need to mess with that because you can get some stuff that is fucking insane um it it, it is the like d- d- destiny like uh stuff where you can like mod your gun guns and you know mm-hmm. hey now your bullets do toxic d- 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 damage or stuff like that yeah but they unlock that stuff really early on in the game so you mm-hmm. can start playing with it and yeah it it helps out so much yeah it's because i've i've had i have like Cause I'm always changing gear. Cause I'm always getting new gear. So that's why I haven't given time to modding. Cause like, oh, I just got a light machine gun that does toxic. So I'm not, you know, this is awesome. Let me, let me just equip this. And then I have the yeah. shotgun that that freezes people. So let me just now let me equip this. So I haven't like I know the modding is there, but I feel like once I get to the end game, that is when you I'm gonna start unlock messing two with mod all that slots. stuff. And you know the next I mean? thing is once you unlock a. M- yeah. m- mod or find a gun that has that one you've unlocked it so if if you uh like re- exactly yeah that's a cool the component gun, of gun you've still unlocked that mod mm-hmm. and then you can put that on your n- no stuff so if you find like a combination yeah. that that works you can just consistently mm-hmm. like put that on your next gun and put that on your next g- gun and stuff like that so exactly exactly so anyway so i've i i've Lowered the world tier to go to the boss, and then I wanted to restart that boss. So when I picked a story point to go to that boss, it said, this is going to overwrite your mm-hmm. save. Are you sure you want to do that? So it, I don't know how, why that works that way, but it, it, it makes you restart the beginning of wherever you were um, if you're going to change that slider, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. that makes sense it's like hey you're gonna skip most of the story or like hey you're gonna skip backwards into most of the story so it just has to update mm-hmm. the save but i guess since they have the slider you can just jump around again get up, yeah. get up and jump around are we still yeah, talking about outright are we are we still talking <laughs> about outriders because like i have no idea what's even i could go into a, the other game i've been playing like, i have, I have no idea outriders. what's happening right now yep, we yeah, are still so talking just... about outriders <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm that's it on Outriders. Actually, good, good job. Adam. What? Uh, I'm with you. Just... I so okay. So I've also been playing this game called what's it? I forgot the name. First class, first class trouble. trouble. First class trouble. First class trouble. So good thing Gino's been playing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I've been, so so um, I was uh, playing with my friend uh, on her stream, and a viewer suggested to her, "Hey, uh, we'll play this game, First Class Trouble," and uh, I looked at it on Steam, and it looked so hilarious. If you guys just want to look at it real quickly, it's it. it's basically it's basically Among Us with like the Bioshock vibes. You know, it's like a third person. Um, what is the what is the bio what is Bioshock like steampunkish? Yeah. What sure. what is it? What. It's like that, that it's, but sort of that era, you know, that, that, uh, what is it? Sixties or twenties, twenties, actually twenties era kind of looking, uh, game. And it's basically among us. So, uh, you have, uh, the, the crew and then you have two people that are acting as killers or whatever. Oh or yeah. It does look they like to, they, they basically, Bioshock. 
I'm looking at the trailer yeah, right? right now. It's so, playing on the YouTube so, version of this. Okay, cool, exactly. So it is so hilarious. And I was looking at, I was looking at the reviews on Steam. And people on Steam are such trolls with the way they review games. They're like, I got to kill my ex-girlfriend, five out of five. <laughs> and then and then the review right under it is I got to watch my friend kill their ex-girlfriend five out of five. And it's like, uh, it's like, but then I also saw a review where it says like, oh, the, the community is so toxic. They just vote you out and kill you immediately. But then when I jumped in with my friend, everybody was so nice. Like the voice chat. So you have to uh, edit your voice chat because it hears you no matter what. So you have to change it to push to talk. Cause it will always pick up your mic cause you need to have a, a, a mic, um, uh, to, to talk to people and everyone was telling us what to do. This is what you gotta do. And then we actually discuss we, so basically what you're doing is there's like three levels, right? There's three, uh, uh levels in the, in the, the building that you're in three or wherever in the space building. station, wherever you are three stories. Sorry. Yeah. Three stories. And what you need to do is find the three key cards to go up to the, to the next story um and that's if you're uh, uh the cr a crew member if you're a personoid you're trying to sabotage the oxygen so people will die quicker or you're trying to hide the key cards or just plain kill people so i had this moment where i found a key card and i went to go put it in on the elevator but right before i got to the elevator someone dropped a chandelier mm. on me <laughs> and I died. And I visibly yelled as as that happened. And I assume everyone around me heard me scream. And then when I when I die, you can't hear me anymore. So they heard my last blood curling scream before the chandelier landed on me. And yeah, and then just those kinds of moments are are just so cool in a game like this. And and uh, I, it's it just came out like into early access, and it's it it is very. Like for an early access game, very properly polished, you know, it's, it's, I haven't uh, seen any bugs. It's kind of funny the way they, they, um, the characters react to certain things. Like when you push them, they just, uh, you know, uh, crash dummy fall to the yeah. floor. You could push Back people up. or, or you could hold, you could, <laughs> there, there, there's a, there's a mechanic that when you find out who the killer is, someone can hold them. Yeah. Like. Like, uh, what is it? Bear hug them from behind, and then the other somebody else will come choke them <laughs> until they die, and then that's like that's how you get rid of like imposters. Or, or another way to get rid of imposters is go to the airlock, you have them stuck in the airlock, and then you, you ask them stuff where they have their final words, and then you press the button and they fly, <laughs> they like get sucked into space. <laughs> it's like just, it's so cool, it's so interesting. It looks neat, and uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely it's it's super funny and super fun to play. I played, I literally just started playing it last night for I played like three matches at like four in the morning. That's cool, and then uh, that's uh, that's yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's so it's such an interesting game. I hope more people play. I hope I hope more there's more eyes on it. Cause it, it has it should blow up the way Among Us has and stuff like that because it is funny. It's it's a super funny game to play. Yeah, cool. So so yeah, definitely check out First Class Trouble. Yes. <clears throat> uh, the only other thing that I've been playing uh is that I finished Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Nice. Just fine. And all. And also playing it pretty late at night, Kyle. Oh. Yeah, you, you are, what are you, my mom? Now? <laughs> I sh sometimes, yeah. periodically, when I'm playing PlayStation, I go to the menu and I go to my friends list to see who's online. Wait, so that means that oh, you go to his room. room. You go to his room. Yes, I, I'm not going to deny that I was also playing late. I'm just saying, uh -huh. Kyle was putting in the extra amount of time to finish. What time is it? What time? I don't even remember. I I swear, I swear there was one. I think it was Wednesday night, <gasps> or no? Was it? It was either like Wednesday morning or it was Friday morning. I swear <gasps> I saw Kyle playing Shadow Tomb Raider at like 1:45 in the uh, morning. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Oh. Yeah, that's, I usually go to bed at like <laughs> two, maybe three. Yeah. So. Mm, there. But, interesting yeah uh beat that game 
it's fine. I think I agree with Ignacio. The second one, I think, is the best of the trilogy. Um, this one seemed very short. And I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I kind of golden pathed it. Um, so I guess I can't really say that it's super short. But it, yeah, it's just like, okay, mm. well, this is all I felt like I needed to do with that and mm. moved on. It was good. It was fine. Yeah, it was fun. Like, like I said before, uh, to me, the third one, it was for sure the least interesting out of them. Like the second one is a better one, I would say. Isn't, yeah. Isn't, isn't Shadow the one where Laura has like the revenge thing or whatever? I mean, she kind of always has that. Nah. In, in, sure, in this trilogy, I, she, she is kind of built up as this like, you're the one causing all of this. Like, you're killing a lot of people he here. You need to stop hurting so see, many I remember people. playing the third I remember playing the third one, but I don't remember it. Uh, but it's weird. I don't remember this. I I don't remember the second one. I remember the first one. I, I think that the first and second like one were one. were more interesting. The first one had the story about her having to the come coming of age having one. to become the uh like growing Tumor. into a quote unquote yeah. murderer. Being okay with murder, but to survive. Laura and Croft, stop her my girl, first murder. To survive. And then the second... They all sort of mesh with me. And so. then the second mm. one to me was her already being established, being knowing what she was doing, yeah. and the set pieces at least were more interesting. Like The, the yeah. place where she was were more, more interesting. And then the third one is the one that I remember the least. I would say the, the jungle environment is the least interesting out of the three environments for me. Yeah, I agree. I just, I just didn't like Tomb Raider because it had online multiplayer trophies, and that's a that's a no no in my book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get negative points for that one. Yeah, I think the PS4 version of the first Tomb Raider doesn't have multiplayer. Oh, really? Now, yeah. Let's go. Well, shout out to Camilla Ledington playing uh, Lara Croft. Very beautiful. Very beautiful woman. Yeah, yeah. she did. Act. Great job with her. Also in Grey's Anatomy. You mean, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Laura mm -hmm. Croft is in Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. How'd she get inside yeah. her body? Yeah. That makes no sense. No. I don't know. Wait, is, is, that, is that not what the show, 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 show is about? All of the stuff that is inside Grey's Anatomy? Oh, no. he's, you see that joke? <laughs> no, that dude. joke? <laughs> You see, that joke went way no. over my head, so I was like, I don't even know what Kyle's yeah. talking about. It's okay, Alan, I don't know what, no, what I'm talking Alan about either. either. Yeah. <laughs> you fool! Kyle's joke was cool. so, was so intricate bad. that it lost me, but he was lost himself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. uh, Ignacio, it says you've not been playing much. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, it, it isn't technically true. I have been playing quite a bunch of things. No, it's true. It's written. In ra in writing, <laughs> yeah, sure. See, it's, it's weird. I, it's weird. I saw. I said not much. I saw. I saw Ignacio playing a game online oh one night, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> well, it could have been Fortnite because I have been playing over here it. Snitching on people. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> just super interested in what we're playing. And while we're at it, Alan, I see that you are online on PSN. Well, yeah, I got my uh, PlayStation's on right now, but I'm not doing anything uh, with it. <laughs> no, I, so uh, I've been playing Fortnite. See, now I got to add Gino so I can snitch on him. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I'm not on that night. That's true. I've been playing Fortnite pretty much every night, and we actually got to play me, Alan, and... No, me, Gino, and, and Kyle, Alan didn't join us. We, the three of us, yeah. played Fortnite on Wednesday. But yeah, I've been playing it pretty much right. every night. Nice. Okay. Kyle, you wanted to add something? No, I was, I was, I was just saying, Kyle. yeah, it was good. It was, it was fun. We did that for whatnots Wednesdays. Got to stir you. But it. did you, but did you win? Did you win? We were so close. We were saying. No, but see, you only, we were saying. you only count, you only count the W's. If it's not a W, it's an L. Yeah, exactly. And we didn't play. Yeah. It's about mm -hmm. the journey. We, so we, were, we got the, to the second. Destination. The oh. Yeah. Right. So right. I've been no. doing that. I've also, I finished. I think you burned so much I finished games. playing <laughs> Picross S3. I talked about it a while ago. It's, it's one of those games that I played every once in a while. It is a nice time waster. 
Uh, so I, I finished okay. Picker of S3, I moved on to S4 now, and I still love those games, but it, it does suck that when I have to start a new one, it is, you, I have to go again through the process of, okay, so I have to do the easy puzzles first, and I finished those in less than a minute. But still, it is Picross, it is, for me, fun. And I'm so behind on Picross because I think there's a, there is a Picross S5 out now. So I, I have to catch up I on see. that. Uh, what else? I started playing Just Cause 2 on my PC. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So for whatever reason, I just got, got the want, the desire, I don't know, what's the word? To play Just Cause 2 and it was pretty cheap on Steam. And so I got it, and one of the things that I like about the game is that I can get the same fun from it now than when I first played it, because it is really a lot of mindless fun. Uh, the mechanics are pretty fun, using the grappling hook, using the, the parachute, and jumping from high altitudes and skydiving a lot. It is a lot of fun. Um, there is not much more to say about it, but again, it is mindless fun. And the last game that I want to talk about is that I tried out Pac-Man 99, ah. which recently came oh. out. And believe it or not, it's Pac-Man. It's just Pac-Man. I would have never guessed. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I would have hoped it was. It is Pac-Man. It, it has the same layout as Tetris 99, which... So you have your... On the center, you have your screen playing Pac-Man, and then you have other 98 squares divided into in both sides of the thing where everyone's playing Pac-Man. And then nice. I think when you eat ghosts, that sense goes out, out to your uh, the other people's screens, which I don't think... I, I only played it once because it, it really is just Pac-Man. I mm -hmm. think that the, what you do is that you don't exactly send out ghosts to them. You send out kind of like these ghost ver versions of Pac-Man, which get uh, scattered around the the level, which then, if you hit one, it slows you down. And so that, of course, will throw you off, because if you have played Pac-Man, you have ghosts chasing you. Uh, yeah, you have to speed past them. Yeah. And so, it's Pac-Man. I like this trend that Nintendo has had, or I don't know if Nintendo is the one making this, but I like this trend of making Battle Royale games out of classic arcade games. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, cool. I yeah. definitely want them to keep doing it and experimenting, but I also would like them to do something else besides a Battle Royale. Like, I, we don't need um, it, another, like, 99 thing, but we also Yeah, do. but it is a nice thing to have. On this right. side, I don't think it is. It, you're getting it in, yeah, as opposed to some other game, yeah. But, but like, like, what was the Zelda game that they did where it was the like dancing to the beat, uh, thing? I cadence, 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 of, cadence, of, cadence of, Hyrule. of Hyrule, yeah, like more stuff Which like that, but, but like, do smaller stuff. experiments like that, like, uh, take. Kirby and make it a I don't know a Metroidvania Kirby ninety nine yeah Kirby 99. just ninety nine uh, there's Kirby's. a Kirby golf there's a Kirby golf game like what more do you want out of him oh, I yeah. Mean, yeah good point conversation done <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go and, and well I don't even know how you there's what there's Kirby there's Kirby Air Ride I mean come on I don't know but but yeah, yeah. just like just smaller that experiments just, just, like that I think would be a Kirby lot of fun for it for all your taste Kyle. You have a every type yeah. of Kirby game. Yeah. You should be happy. Yeah. Yeah, get owned, Kyle. Get out of here. Yeah, just admit. Just admit. <laughs> don't say you want them to branch out. Just admit that you want a Kirby like DDR game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's Pac Man, but in the style of Tetris 99 if you played it. Nice. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, with that, I think that brings us to housekeeping. If you did not know, Marvin. we have multiple podcasts here at the Whatnots. Uh, Ignacio has something to say. What, what was we didn't hear? It. We didn't. Yeah, hear we it. didn't hear. Oh, you didn't hear it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. As long as you heard it, though, Kyle, that's fine. 
There yeah, we go. Well, I that, fixed yeah, it for uh, the great. next one. So there we go. Cool. Uh, if you, that was a great sound. If you guys did not know, we have multiple podcasts here at The Whatnots. You guys can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Just t- type in The Whatnots and all of our shows will pop up right there. Uh, we have been doing a bunch of reactions to some recent movie trailers, as well as Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, on the Reactor Core. So be sure to check all of that stuff out. Uh, we also just did um, a Japanese Kit Kat tasting on the Captain's Log, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, and who knew that an apple flavored Kit Kat would be so fucking good? But it was. Mm, it was amazing. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I, I wasn't there, but who would have guessed that the green tea Kit Kat is fucking nasty? It is. I hated <laughs> it. It was gross. It, it's, 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 it's awful. It's so bad. Wait, so it's so bad. So how did you get these Japanese? We candy? bought them on Amazon. It was just a variety pack. Yeah. So we did all of that. It was a lot of fun. But yeah. Uh, patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us uh, if you guys like what we do here at the whatnots uh, we have a one dollar tier uh, as well as a three dollar tier uh, which gets you all kinds of exclusive content which by the way we need to plan and see if we can do that this week or something because we need to check in with our video game fantasy draft and I've been so many uh, games have just come out that just for me and I just couldn't add. Yet. I just yeah. haven't been able to add so many games I want to. Uh, so big like shout out to our Patreon nice supporters way. at the $5 tier. So thank you, Sam, so much for helping us out. We love you and appreciate you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Sam. We are not streaming this on Twitch yet, but maybe one day we will be. And we do have a Twitch channel where we play some video g- games and we stream the captain's log. You could have seen me eat that green tea Kit Kat last night and just be like, no, uh-uh. Um, but yeah, we are at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. You guys can support us there as well. And if you have a- 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 Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime prime uh, you just have to link your accounts which is super simple and you have a free subscription to give out each month uh, and we'd love that to be us because uh, that means we get f- some free money and we can make bigger and better content for you you the listener that's right you yeah. jim you you ryan. Jim. i'm speaking yeah. directly to you you jim ryan uh, yeah yeah, yeah, well, jim ryan. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah look look into my eyes jim this could be your chance. Okay? Brian, Make it happen. Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan. But <laughs> uh not it's it's still scary. Someone out there, I don't know, someone out there thinks the green tea Kit Kat mm-hmm. is the best Kit Kat of all of them. Maybe they yeah. do. And that kind of terrified that yeah. that low key kind of scares and me. And you know what? They can get lost. <laughs> <laughs> And take the green tea yeah. Kit Kats with you. Go on Amazon, buy all of them till they're sold out, and then go anywhere indeed, else. Indeed, indeed. Uh, but that about wraps us up for housekeeping this week. Let's get on to the news. I didn't. I didn't hear that one. I, I heard that one, you and we got to Bomb dropped by Jason Schreier, my friends. Yeah, this I don't know pa- why you posted such er, a f- such a fat paragraph. Earlier in this week, you don't got to read it, Alan. You just got to listen to me. Uh-huh. So Damn. I don't want to even listen to Damn. all that. So, so, um, so Jason Schreier dropped uh, on Bloomberg uh, a bomb of an article uh, uh, talking about PlayStation and two main things. I guess that were sort of pulled out of this. I almost died. Uh, the, the Last of Us remake is a thing, and the Days Gone 2 pitch was rejected. Uh, Days Gone 2 from Sony Ben. So uh, I, I wrote up some notes here. I want to just give people an idea of what's going on here. So this article that Jason Schreier published, it was titled, Sony's Obsession with Blockbusters is Stirring Unrest Within the PlayStation Empire. So 
this article sort of details some sort of turbulence among their smaller studios. So I want to talk about two big things here. This is a big one right here. Let's talk about this. So Sony Core's Visual Arts Service Group is known as the team that helps Sony's other studios with their projects. Uh, with assets, um, you know, animation, uh, development stuff. They helped uh, on Spider-Man. They helped with, uh, with uh, Uncharted, stuff like that. So in 2007, Michael Mumbauer, he became head of the studio. And he recruited a group of 30 developers, and he wanted to make a game of their own. So for their first solo project, he wanted to pitch something that he knew his bosses at Sony would accept. So rather than a new IP, he decided to focus on remaking older games for the PS5. And they initially pitched Uncharted, but ultimately they were tasked to remake The Last of Us which was codenamed T1X. But I'm just going to say ticks. I'm going to say ticks from now on, okay? Okay. So Sony... Oh, like Magic yeah, Online. So, so Sony decided to keep the studio secret, and they refused to raise their budget to hire help for development. And then when The Last of Us 2, being developed by Naughty Dog, fell behind, Sony sent the Visual Arts Service Group, mm. which was uh, now led by Michael Mumbauer. He, told, he pulled them away from ticks, to help complete The Last of Us 2, right? And then once this was finished, Sony then sent the majority of Naughty Dog's team over to them to help with The Last of Us remake. And then this ended up becoming a Naughty Dog project, which sort of made Mumbauer and their team feel a upset. like a little upset. Yeah. They, they wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted to be the next studio. And then... The, the thing that they were working on was just taken over by Naughty Dog and then it became a Naughty Dog production, right? So then a lot of the top team left, uh, the top of the staff, uh, that team left along with Mumbauer. Um, and uh, that's what's going on. So now we have a Last of Us remake in development by Naughty Dog. And I'm not sure how many people want this. I'm still going to buy it. I don't want it, but I'm going to play it no matter what. Okay, so, so let's be honest here. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Do you guys want to discuss this, and then I'll go to the next one? Or do yeah, I go to the next one and let's stay just here discuss this? For a bit. Yeah, let's discuss. I, so what would you say, Kyle? You want a remake? I, man, I this is kind of baffling. Like, I, I, I think it's neat that they they started out as a studio of like, hey, give us some remakes to, like, you know, get our feet wet and stuff like yeah. that but we're gonna do, do do that with the hopes of making our own thing that makes sense exactly. that sounds fine um i i think having it be a last of us remake is just weird it's baffling mm -hmm. like i i we we already have the remaster it still looks fine it still plays great uh, yeah. We just got The Last of Us 2. I know that the TV show is in the works in HBO. Like, I understand them wanting to put more La La Last of Us stuff in the spotlight, right? But th th this seems unnecessary. Mm -hmm. I, 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 do, 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 do you guys think the same thing? Yeah, I. But one of the things that I took out of this article is that it does show you where Sony is at this point, where they are doing all these moves to make themselves the most money they can. Mm -hmm. Even though I... The Last of Us is my favorite game of all time, and I personally wouldn't necessarily want uh, The Last of Us remake, because it has been so soon, and I still think that the game holds up. It's not like a PS1 game, which you would need to update. Because this is a remake, it's not even a remaster, which we already got. That being said, I would play it, and a lot of people will play it. Yeah. You, you can say that you don't need it, you don't want it, but you know that this will make Sony a lot of money. And, and that's that. what I got. That's what I got from this article where it will, yeah. Sony is being focused on get, making the most money. They have Naughty Dog, which they know is their cash cow. It is their biggest studio it is their the studio with the biggest hits and 
if you put the most money into it, you will get the most money out of it. Whereas if you have the smaller studio uh, that you were talking about, it, it seems that that studio was... I, from My assumption is that that studio was created with the intention of helping out other studios, and that was the idea behind the studios. And then you have someone like Ma Michael Melnbauer, which I, I'm assuming is someone with, with a creative background which who has a lot of creative ideas and wanted to take this studio in a different direction but that's not the direction necessarily that sony wants with that studio because it is a smaller studio and mm -hmm. that's not what they want for out of those studio and you see that probably that's where a clash got created in the end and so it is <laughs> for me reading this article it is the struggle between two sides of mine. One side where I want Sony to be more creative, to be not predictable, like they w how they were in the PS3 era, where you would see weirder stuff come, come out from them. But yeah. then there's the other side of me who understands economics, who understands that Sony is a company. It's not, a, it's not out there sitting out to just make art. It is a company that's out there to make money, and this is, they're making these moves to make money. Mm -hmm. and so yeah it yeah it's just like that that makes sense and i agree with it i just don't see why they couldn't have like done that like hey because the la 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 last of us is so popular and we know that we'll make money why not use that to promote something else like hey from the same studio that brought you the last of us here is the uncharted one remake right yeah like I that, mean, you that, could do I, that, I or you can help in the same. You can way. strike by the irony. Sort. We know that the Last of Us HBO Last of Us show is coming out. You yep. gotta strike by the irony. Sort. And people will buy it again. Yeah. So. From the studio that brought you the blood dripping Last of Us Part Two gut wrenching story, Jack and Daxter. Right, if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you had me decide whether I wanted a. Uh, Uncharted remake or a Last of Us remake, I would go with Uncharted because absolutely that it's game older. will need a it's remake older more as well, yeah. than yeah. Last of Us. Exactly. Uh, mm. Alan, what do you think, Alan? What's going on? Up with you. So I've, I'm kind of the opposite from all all of you, but for different reasons. So I I've been seeing Twitter just kind of bluntly kind of bellyache about this the last day or so, like ever since it broke, everyone's been whining nonstop. And I didn't know about the Michael Mumbauer studio kind of being, you know, shit on like that. I didn't know that. That's truly unfair. But The Last of Us getting a remake? It doesn't matter. I mean, you can't really complain about it because how many did, like, granted it's a remake, so I'm stretching my points a bit. But, like, how many times have Resident Evil 4 been moved or slightly revamped or brought somewhere else? How many times has Skyrim been enhanced or re-released or anything else? This yeah, it's Sony's a, biggest game. Ignacio's like re-enhancement. No, I know. It's no, yeah, I know. It, I know. It's a. It, the, it, it, hang on. Yeah. It's. I know. It's a remake. It's different. I'm it's, stretching it's my points, but point, like, yeah. yeah, it's a remake. But again, they're bringing it back. Ignacio's right. It's a business. If I was Sony, would I do it? If I was gonna make hella money, uh, yeah, I want to make money, and like. If people are so upset about Last of Us getting a remake, then do your part as a person. Vote with yeah, your wallet. Absolutely. Just don't buy the game. If you if you buy the game, then you legitimately have no place to complain at all. It is kind of like And honestly, I I think I think even more than Uncharted, I think the Jack and Daxter yeah. series deserves a God, remake I more than love this. that. I think <laughs> I think Sly Cooper, not for Naughty Dog, but mm -hmm. Sly Cooper deserves to be brought back as a remake. Mm -hmm. There's so, so many first. better options. Yeah. But we're not getting that. So if you don't like it, don't buy the game. If you buy the game, just deal with it. If you've bought Skyrim more than its initial release, then you know what? You have no right to complain because it's being re-released. Uh, the, yeah, the one I'll thing I'll your, say to point, in addition to that okay. is I think it's good to be critical of the things you love. Yeah. So you, yes. you can complain. I, I don't necessarily think it's you don't have a right to complain. But yeah, it's it's like... I like J J Jano said he doesn't need this. He might complain a bit, but he's still buying it. Like it's you yeah. Know, I'm gonna admit you know, that I, I, I'm yeah, gonna right? buy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, if it comes okay. if it comes out, I will buy it. <laughs> but also like it's it's just the fact that like everyone has been 
so outwardly negative for something that's not like it just, it's a game you love it seems it. unnecessary it when they have the remaster oh, and they is. could have just been like hey here's a ps5 version of the remaster with like you know mm -hmm. here's the exactly. upgrade that seems like less work and they could have re-released it with that and made the same amount of money but i don't know how like game my, development my works. point is that's true I exactly didn't... but I didn't know that Sony. I didn't know Sony did Michael the the yeah. like Mumbar Studio that yeah. bad. That so sucks. people talking about the Last of Us being remade, that doesn't matter. The important part is Sony screwed that studio over. That's the important. That's what people should be claiming on complaining about. <sighs> See, I don't not know. Not the if, remaster. If, if, not the remake. I don't know if I would say they screw them over because again, that's not what the studio was out there for. The I studio know. was out there for uh, to help. Oh, but Ignacio, if they if they 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 were there for that primarily, but they wanted to yeah. to do something for themselves. That's why they pitched this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. That's why oh let's let's uh, let us do a remake so we could you know make our own thing and then all that stuff. So they did technically screw them over because they said yes and then they didn't help them anymore. You know, yeah. so they let them be eaten into. They let Naughty Dog eat into them, pretty much, and then just. Yeah. They focus. That's what the article is mainly all about. That they focus yeah. on their biggest studios, not yeah. nurturing these smaller studios that want to come out of yeah. it. Um, and Which that's why again, peep, That's why there's turnover. That's why what Michael I was Mumbai what I was saying before. That that's yeah. the, the side of me that doesn't like this because I I miss it, the time with Sony would do <laughs> weirder things like yeah. yeah. In the PS3 era, you would have games like Infamous. You would have games like Twisted Metal. You would have games like Fat Princess, uh, uh, PlayStation mm. also have Battle Royale. Now, now you have Rest games that are pretty much, even though they are great games, they are games that are pretty much on the same vein. You have third-person yeah. action games, which I love, but still, it is just yeah, kind of like all in one group. It, it's I do miss that hey. side of Sony where they would do weird things. Yeah. Well, don't worry, guys. Sunday, everyone will get to sit down and angrily play the last of us remake uh -huh. so you get to play it and you get to be angry about but it we so, also yeah we can't everybody we can't wins. ignore that uh sony like we're also focused on yeah they're focusing on their big studios but they do have you know they have kina they have uh bug snacks yeah. that came out straight those are a uh, partnerships. Returnal. they're partnerships but yeah that's that's that that should be spoken of where they do make these partnerships, although they're not focusing internally on their own teams to do that kind of stuff. They are seeking out those partnerships to bring those games that they're not focusing on in a way. Yeah, and it, it, it is good that there uh, at least there is a uh, there's diversification when it comes to the partnerships. But yeah, it, it is a bit sad seeing what they're doing with their internal studios. Uh, we'll talk about it in the next news story, but yeah. it does seem like Sony is. Focusing now more on being a Western, uh, mm -hmm. like a, a more of a Western company, and that means yeah. solidifying one vision, and that yeah. vision being games that are of a certain type that they are third-person action games. Then, so let me bring up this, the, the second point that yeah. the article the that the article one. brought up. So, uh, Sony Band uh, after the release of Days Gone One, obviously the game sold very well. We all know this. Um, wasn't really critically well received, um, but they pitched a Days Gone too, and it was rejected. Uh, instead, one team at the studio was sent to help Naughty Dog with a multiplayer game. They didn't title it here, but I assume it's Factions. And then uh, another team uh, from Bend was assigned to work on a new Achar Uncharted game with Naughty Dog's supervision. So they, the top. Uh, some of the staff uh, and some of the top leads were unhappy with that arrangement, and they left. Mm -hmm. uh, the article doesn't name who who was it that left, uh, but they were they were afraid that they were going to be absorbed into Naughty Dog as well. Yeah, and uh, they they asked to be taken off that Uncharted project. I believe they got last month they that yeah. they got their wish and they're working on a game of their own now. You don't have it here. I think it is in the article, but yeah, after they were put on to work on these Naughty Dog stuff, and apparently, yeah. eventually, Sony gave them what they wanted, which was make their own game. 
Yeah, it says here they got their wish last month and are now working on a new game of their own that will be yeah. part of a brand new franchise. So, yeah. I mean, fortunately that, you know, worked out for them, but after them voicing their fears that they were going to be, you know, sucked into Naughty Dog, which is their, you know, no, and one of Sony's most notable studios, obviously. So, um, what, what do you guys uh, think a Days Gone 2 would, should come out, Kyle? What do you, what do you... Well, do you I feel? actually haven't played gone? the first one, so uh, uh, me either. Yeah, I I, I, I don't have much to say on this IP in particular, but mm. I I think yeah, it should have at least been given a chance to see if they could do something a little better with it. Like I, that's the thing. Like it sold really well, and I think mm -hmm. generally speaking, people liked it. But critically, it was kind of just like, eh, this one's you know not their best thing but they had some neat technology in in yeah. that game that yeah. whole like you know big crowd technology stuff um and well yeah if, if like it, I, I think it would have been neat to see them given a chance to then expand on that like okay you made it you've implemented it once now expand right that, yeah that that's that i think is always a good thing because that gives them a chance to g grow and really hone their skills Exactly. Well, plus Days Gone is also part of the PlayStation like Instant Plus collection, yeah. so you know it's it's strong enough to be a part of the Plus collection. Yeah. So I was sur surprised just that like Sony didn't give them. <laughs> huh? just, just like the witness. witness. <laughs> just like the witness. Yeah. yeah just so, yeah. Mm. I am a bit surprised. That's... It wasn't part of the PS Plus collection. It was a free game because they knew you wouldn't want it any other way. I was surprised that Sony didn't give them Days Gone too because of the fact that it sold well, and it does seem that even yeah. though with critics it didn't resonate it seems like it resonated with people yeah i played through it and i didn't get much further into it not because i wasn't enjoying it but because i didn't feel like there was there wasn't something keeping me there so mm -hmm. that's the one of the reasons that i dropped it and i i would have liked to see them taking all the feedback that that they would have gotten i would have loved to see them trying to tackle the game again because there were some neat ideas in there like the seeing giant crowds of zombies it was pretty cool yeah. i'm glad that they are they are letting them work on a new game of their own because i'm sure one of the last, last things that they want is to work on another uncharted game because if you do not remember ben worked on the psv uncharted game and that's one of the games that people do not talk about when they talk about uncharted and so I'm guessing Ben doesn't want to go uh, through that again. Yeah. But once again, it, it is representative of where Sony is right now, where they want to go where the money is. Because, I mean, they Sony Ben had Days Gone, but before that they had Uncharted Golden Abyss on the PS Vita, which, again, it is one game that people do not talk about. And then... Between those two games, there was a big gap of nothing. And so, yeah. if Sony wasn't happy with Days Gone, it, did, it would seem, from what we've seen from this article, it would have seen that they would have wanted to, I don't know, do so not give them another opportunity. It would have yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that they gave them an, an opportunity to yeah, make another well, game. Well, because you assume Sony had to probably look at it from a financial point of like, what the mayor they're like what if days gone was almost a lightning in the bottle like it was fun while it lasted but maybe a second one won't yeah. do well like they have to kind of do that you know cost and risk analysis and be like is it worth That's it true. to yeah. dump our resources into this instead of something yeah. else and then as you said with a financial thing sony knows that i doubt last of us or a new another uncharted will definitely succeed where a days gone too is kind of will it mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, uh, Ignacio, you mentioned uh, the Vita, so I think we can move on to the next yeah. piece of news here, uh, Sony-related as well. Oh God, look at all those bullets. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> Just the yeah, bullets, excellent. not data points, the bullets. I, I, I scrolled, okay. I saw that, and I was like, oh, my brain so, was like, So oh I'm going I'm to blast through them, and then uh, Ignacio could sort of summarize a little bit what, what, what exactly is going on so we could talk about it. Um, so okay. number two, Go. former Sony employee spills the beans on the PS Vita in a Reddit AMA. So we got a few bullet points here. Let me just go through them. 
a, a few. <laughs> um, Killing the Vita had been in the card since 2016 slash 2017. Sony was okay with having it as a passive source of income, but this suddenly stopped once the firmware was crapped. Was cracked. I said crapped. Crapped. <laughs> that too. I mean that too. Um, but this is related to another... Um, this this is related point. to this story from last yeah. week where we talked about how, how Sony was shutting down the the store. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, reading the the AMA, what the person had to say was that Sony wasn't really interested on the PS Vita, to be to be honest. And they were looking to to just kill it since twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. So they ju- it just Got to Give me an one excuse. And now, now they're going I'll to do kill it. it. Yeah, but what happened? So what happened was that once that <laughs> firmware was cracked, that's when it went into kill mode. Give me any. That's reason. when they were like, any "All right, reason. this is where we're gonna, you know, get over it. Let's let it die and all that stuff." Um, so, like, from reading this article, it gave me the impression that Sony, uh, pretty soon realized that the Vita wasn't gonna be a success, and so they were okay having the Vita being, oh. Developers will put out games in there, and so we'll just collect the money that we make out of those games that people put in there. Sony was just happy with the beta being just a passive source of income, where they just let it be, and they will get some money out of it. That all stopped once the beta software was cracked, and people were able to put custom firmware in there, and most importantly, to pirate games. And that that's where it became... Well, you have it here. Once that happened... Sony just went from we are okay with having it live to now we have to kill it. Yeah. Because now it will be a problem. Okay. Let me let me skip a few of these bullet points. Some of them are a little bit more uh more intense than other ones. Sony sees Vita as a failure. Uh pretty much missed every sales target. We know that. Uh, mm-hmm. we all know mm-hmm. that. And uh the 2011 PSN hack, uh everyone remembers that. Uh, scared Sony so much that uh, they became very cautious of any potential hacking. Uh, so hacking the Vita is one of the reasons as to why it used pri- proprietary storage instead of yeah anything else. So reading through it, one of the things that keep kept coming up was that Sony was super afraid of any hacking of any sorts yeah. after the PSN hack of it, and so you the the employee sides. That being one of the reasons as to why the PS Vita infamously had a proprietary uh, memory the memory storage. Yeah. And, uh, okay, what else here? There had been plans to bring trophies to the PSP, but this was quickly dropped once the firmware was broken. Sorry, Alan. Uh, again, once again, that's okay. it, it had to do with the fears of hacking that Sony had. Yeah. Hack, hacking, uh, the fear of hacking kept, yeah. kept coming up on the... On the um, so there doesn't seem to be any plans for a new handheld, which is unfortunate, as R and D has primarily been working on PS Five and PS VR Two, as we know. Um, mm-hmm. you spoke here a little bit earlier before we started, um, Ignacio, about the mystery port on the Vita. Um, apparently there was something they were working on, but they were software issues and they couldn't get through. Um, yeah, and so, Bluetooth functionality also rendered some ideas moot. So if so, you ever had a PS Vita, I'm guessing just the, the first model, you yeah. would have, of course, noticed that there was a port that never got used. And if you didn't ever see it on a PS Vita, if you're a video listener, you'll see that on the PS Vita, it had a port right here. Yeah. And that port was never used. Never used. That's incredible. That's incredible. The Vita sold around 17 million units. That's a, a number we didn't know prior to this AMA. Uh, and most of it was in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, backwards compatibility is one of the most requested and least used features, as it is with anything else. Uh, and the Vita Slim and the PSTV, which were also abandoned, were Sony's attempts to turn things around. Yep. And uh, last bullet point here, there's been a lot of internal competition for the uh, quote control of the PlayStation brand, and over the years, America has been winning because America is now the premier video game market. Yeah, so oh, you you can China. see that, for example, with the fact that <laughs> PlayStation headquarters <laughs> moved to the United States, and uh, now yeah. Yeah. from the previous article that you read, it it is starting to look more and more like 
the games are moving towards that direction of a more unified vision and that vision is more congruent with with what the west wants yes third person yeah, action exactly. shooters with zombies yeah. there and also go. one last thing that we talked about last week why would some why would sony kill any storefront because people always look at it as just it just keeping the servers up and that's where the money being spent goes and one of the things that the former employee talked about was that it is more than just keeping up the servers one of the things that that person brought up quite a bit was that processing payments seems to be a big part of one of the of of it of keeping up a store running mm -hmm. not only the process of having people pay but then getting the money to the developers that's yeah. all mm. things that you had to put work into yeah and it's so hard to pay people yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff there with the Vita that we didn't know before. I, unfortunately, still can't get one, and I don't think I ever will. Um, you can't get one. You ask me to give you mine, and yes, correct to give you mine. Just go I to did eBay. I see that. Like, just leave yours under the desk there. I'll, I'll come pick it up. <laughs> go on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want, it's better if I get it from somebody. Somebody that I trust. But you, know. you can buy a really cool Japanese for like seven thousand dollars, Alan. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, last I checked, the one I was eyeing was like a hundred and forty bucks. Oh, you spend me. all that money on Genshin Impact, right? Damn, yeah, damn, yeah. damn, damn. We're still on that, huh? We're still on that. Huh? Man, apparently, Gen apparently Genshin's racist. I I was watching a video oh, yeah. on that. Jeez. Well, let's uh, talk yeah. about that next week. Number three. Yeah. Microsoft eyeing Kojima. So uh, I think I have it here. So okay, so so the Sony blog released a, a, a trailer for a horror project called Abandoned earlier this week. Um, Kyle, we had a Twitter exchange on that, and I'm very uh, sorry for what I <laughs> called you out on. Uh, to be honest with you, <laughs> but uh, so good. but were you wrong though? <laughs> were you wrong? It was all Kyle, good. I, again, I, if you wanna if you wanna play that type of game, you can just play Outlast. Look, I have no intention Kyle? of actually playing the, the abandoned game. It's not my style, but it was like, hey, it's neat. It's an exclusive. Look at this, and you guys Kyle were like, you hate Kyle horror. Wants, You're Kyle a terrible wants to gamer. Look like a like, Jeez, I'm sorry for being excited. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle wants to be a horror genre gamer nope. but he's yeah, not and yeah. he has to let people know that he is but he's yeah. not. No, not at all so so this trailer was revealed and it was revealed uh from a developer named blue box games and uh people thought it was secretly uh hideo kojima because uh when they looked it up there's not a lot of history on uh that developer and i think it's just because they uh, have it made a triple A game yet? So yeah, it was because the trailer reminded people of uh, trailers like for uh, Silent Hills and PT. Yeah. And also the fact that Phantom Pain the and all, all the studio stuff didn't that he did seem to have that, much, too. much going on, and it reminded people of when the Phantom Pain came out. Yeah, and another big key component as to why people uh, you know speculate with stuff like this because it's because Phil Spencer he's not a very um, secretive guy. He likes to to you know um he he when he speaks he has his you know his shelves behind him and he yeah. likes to before indiana jones was revealed he had the the hat on the shelf behind him to to you know uh to show people and and now he has the ludens uh statue which is kojima's um company uh behind him in a video so that's what led people to believe that you know microsoft is working uh, with Kojima on something, but that's sort of all we have with that story. Um, so it w I would like to see them do more Death Stranding and uh, something no, something so, similar to that. Uh, so there, there is a little uh, bit more. Yeah, is there more? Is there more? Is, yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh, here we have a venture beat article by Jeff Grubb and. What happened was that people were reporting on what you said, Gino, that there was this game that people were thinking that it was a Kojima game, but it wasn't. The developers came out and said that they had no connection to Kojima. Mm -hmm. And this article from Jeff Grubb was reporting on that. But the thing is that at the end of the article, Jeff Grubb says that he knows Kojima isn't working on this game because as far, uh, from what he has heard, 
Microsoft has been trying to work with Kojima, and that was one of the, like, Jeff Grubb put it in there, but that's huge news that no one knew that Microsoft was trying to, to get Kojima to work on an on a Xbox exclusive game. And so then later during Thursday's kind of funny games daily, Jeff Grubb actually popped into the chat and said that the deal seems to be now with the lawyers. Yeah. And so, so yeah, it, it seems it, like Microsoft is trying to get Kojima. It seems like they okay. are working with him to some extent to see if they can get his next game exclusive or at least on Game Pass or something. Um, and that is why he had the statue in in the back there. Yeah. Uh, but kind of like what we talked about earlier, this just kind of sucks for Blue Box Studio games that had this story like completely run away from them. Uh, and just be like, yeah, nope, sorry, not Kojima. This is just uh, us here, you know. Um, but I mean, in, it, in... it could be bad. It could also be good because yeah. now Total people compliment. are yeah. looking at the game. Yeah, there's a lot more oh. people talking about it for more sure. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But I, I for one, uh, am excited to see what Kojima makes. I know the rumors out there have has been that it is a... Well, horror game which is just like ah, oh, well okay not no. one for, for me but yeah <laughs> I, I i do tend to like the stuff that he he makes so yeah but so what i wanted to talk about with you guys is that do you think that kojima will will work on an xbox exclusive game and what do you guys think what would that look like be weird it would be weird It'd be weird, hello weird. <laughs> so, um, no. I, I mean, that's a good Chima game. I, I can see Microsoft. Like I, To me, the conversation revolves more around Microsoft r r rather than Kojima. Because he, yeah. he can just kind of do what he wants since he's like, hey, I'm just going to make a game. You guys know me and my name. Uh, however weird all my bullshit is, you guys are going to eat it up. And mm -hmm. I think Death Stranding was great for PlayStation 4. I loved that game. I, I know it was very uh, divisive, but um, it it was at least one that had a lo lot of conversation around it. And I think that is also a good thing. And if Microsoft can put that in their back pocket and just be like, hey, yeah. exclusive to Xbox and PC for yeah. at least a year if they, they can at least get that, then like that is something to be like, oh shit, okay. It's and also Jima interesting game on that Game Pass, hell yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that, Kyle, too, because Microsoft can do that based off of the moves they've been making. Yeah. You know, with MLB coming to Game Pass exclusively and stuff like that, they, they can that very big, well take thick Kojima from. Wallet. Yeah, they could take <laughs> Kojima from PlayStation for sure, and yeah. make an exclusive game for for themselves. So. Um, Microsoft has the money. Kojima has the idea, and he he just he just wants to make games. You know, I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure That's if he, he. Yeah, I I I don't know if Kojima would want it to be fully exclusive unless Microsoft really pays them a lot, which they could do. But which I they would. I, I yeah. I, yeah, and and they they would. But I think Kojima, like you said, just wants to make games, and I think having it available on the most platforms as possible would interest him more. Um, which is why I mentioned that like year long exclusivity of like, Hey, maybe it's on that stuff first and then yeah. down the road, you know, I learned any thoughts. I, I don't know, man. I never played Death Straining. I never, I won't play Kojima's next game. I also never played any of the metal gear games wow. except for five. Wow. So I'm not really a Kojima. Like, I never played Silent Hill either. I just know it's popular. Me. Well, so, so like it isn't Kojima. So Kojima the... Kojima's just kind of, it's just a name. Yeah, but... If they're like, hey, his game's on Xbox, I'll be like, okay, I wasn't going to play it anyways. I mean, yeah, Kojima is a game, but it is the name in, games in, in the games industry, which it is no, one know. of the few people, if not the only person, where if you put Kojima... It is a Kojima. People will buy it not because of the game, but because no, it is a Kojima game. Right. No, I know. People will yeah. people will buy it. I'm just saying, like, 
him having a Microsoft exclusive or anything else, it does nothing yeah. for me. Which is fair. That's fine. Yeah. I yeah. have two thoughts on the Some, somebody somebody oh, walks up. Hey, I had hey, I had a Coca-Cola. Okay. <laughs> I have two I had two thoughts on this. The first one is that I would be surprised if Kojima actually goes through with the deal. Because you would think that Kojima is way too close with Sony. I, Kojima has had such a huge history with Sony. I mean, yeah, the first Metal Gear game came out of the MSX and then on, on Nintendo, but starting with the Metal Gear Solid, all of those games have come out on right. PlayStation consoles. And you would... And in a way, those have been defined by PlayStation consoles. I, I mean, for example, you would have the handheld games like Portable Ops or, or Peace Walker, which were defined by their, their hand, the handheld consoles that they were on, or how Kojima took advantage of the PS3 to make such a huge game with a ton of, of cutscenes in it. And so even even after they split from from Konami, Sony was there for them. Uh, they made their game with yeah. in collaboration with Sony. Yeah. And so I would be surprised if Kojima would now go oh, and right. make an exclusive quick game with Xbox. Y yes, that's one of the the like the sides of that. But I do wonder if there's uh, like a minimum for Kojima to go like no I cannot do that to Sony like I mean Microsoft has the money and that brings me to my second point which is Microsoft realized that they have so much money that they've been just every problem <laughs> that they've been that <laughs> they are Thick, throwing so much wallet. money to hey. their problem I wish I had like, that problem they, <laughs> they bought Bethesda <laughs> and so now they took Bethesda from Bethesda came from Sony they made a deal with the MLB, and so what once was a huge exclusive for PlayStation is now going to be on Game Pass Day 1. Mm -hmm. And now with Kojima, if they take away Kojima from Sony, I mean, yeah, Microsoft I mean, realized that they can solve their problems and take away stuff from Sony just by throwing money at it. We don't necessarily know if this is for an exclusive. This could technically just be uh, like, hey, we want your next project on Game Pass Day 1. Um, you know, they might not be asking I for doubt exclusivity. That that's where where the talks would be right now. I think that if it is, if this is true, and if it does go through, I think it is for an exclusive. It's not just for them to have it on Game Pass. I mean, yeah, shoot for the moon, right? Like, hey, we want this yeah. ex exclusive, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, cool. and also, I do wonder if Sony saw this and is is. Like they metaphorically went to Kojima's house, knocked on the door, and got on their knees. We baked hey, you what's a up, cake, man? Kojima. How no, have you been? It's no, been so no, long. No, no, no. It would be a huge Sony, blow. It would be. Sony is not worried because they're trying to figure out the how much money remake. the Last of Us remake is going <laughs> to make them. They don't. Kojima's like, I'm going to go to Microsoft's house. Sony's like, okay, yeah, we'll see no, you later. No, no, I, I think that that's the Sony got the elf. From Microsoft taking Bethesda <laughs> games, Sony took the L with the MLB. Uh, now yeah. Sony will take the L from. Yeah, no, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Sony they're like pulling Pity. Pity. So I Pity, see come you on. playing Xbox, Kojima. Hitty, come on, Hitty. Uh, <laughs> don't leave us, Hitty. Come on. There we go. Again, Sony just sits there like MLB going to Game Pass. Kojima going to Microsoft, Sony's like, Sony doesn't even turn them, they just go, okay, be back before curfew. No, I think, I see, I think Kojima would be the slap in the face and they realize that they have to actually do something. You know what I think? I, I feel like Microsoft is specifically going like, Yo, are you going to react to this? Like, what about this? Will you react to this? Like, come, like what's going yeah. on there? Am I annoying really yet? Am I annoying yeah, yet? Am I annoying, am I annoying yet? Am I annoying? Because ever since, ever since, ever since Sony with that Last of Us remake, Microsoft's like, okay, how focused are they? We don't know. And like, okay, we're going to test something. Yeah. 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 They're going to buy the studio that my that PlayStation didn't pay attention to now. And then they're going to... No, I, I, Sony... Hell, my, 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 so he has Microsoft's gonna make a Jack and Dexter remaster, and Sony's gonna uh, be like, yeah. "Okay, so the Last of Us remake is gonna come out next year, <laughs> and we're golden." Wait, there's a Jack remaster? Oh, uh, well, Last of okay. Us remake. Let's no, go. No, Sony has been getting so many exclusive from Square Enix 
I just see Microsoft buying Square Enix. Oh my God! Can you? I would Don't hate that. I would not like that. that would Do it. Suck so much. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on, yeah. guys. Number four. Uh, E3 is back. This comes from Venture Beat. Uh, Jeffy Grub Grub wrote this at Venture Beat. Uh, E3 God. is returning this year as the Electronic Entertainment Experience. <laughs> the ESA announced today that it is holding the annual E3 event as a digital so- showcase from June 12th through June 15th. And it even managed to snag a few major partners for the festivities. Nintendo, Xbox, Capcom, Konami, Ubisoft, Take-Two Interactive, Warner Bros., and Coke Media will all show some sort of content as part of E3. Yes, so, there we go. Man, I, I, would, I would have read that as Koch. 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 It's Coke. No, it's Coke. <laughs> Coke. So E3. And Koch and Koch there Media. There we go. What, you guys, you guys excited for E3 this year or what? Hell yeah. Uh, Capcom's there, <laughs> yeah. so I guess. Uh, like, yeah. uh, anxiously excited, if, if that's a uh-huh. thing. Like, I, it, I, it, I think it's very clear that we still don't know how any of this is going to play out exactly with yeah. this and Jeff Keighley's Summer yeah. Game Fest all in the same month and stuff like that. It, like... I, I, I think the dust hasn't settled quite yet because COVID was such a big uh, just piece of shit, right? That yeah. it, it screwed everything. It, it, it screwed everything up uh, that yeah. we don't know exactly yeah. how all of this will play out or if this will be something worth watching. But I'm mm-hmm. excited because we didn't have an E3 last year so i do want to see what they do with it this year yeah also i do want e3 to survive and yeah. for me one of the reasons that i am excited for it is that if e3 didn't happen this year we know that nintendo xbox ubisoft warner and who knows who else would have still had their own mm-hmm. showcase like last year for me at least having e3 here with them it is now making them all be in this time frame which last year i think that it it was it wasn't good that the it was so all over the place everyone yeah through so so many months at least right now we will have some a focused event where everyone will be in yeah Yeah. true perfect it's perfect so glad to have it back glad to have it back did, did, uh, did we, that's because they they have the actual date right did we say that oh yeah june 12th yeah, yeah, June, okay, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. i yeah. i honestly didn't even remember if we had any three last year we didn't. <laughs> i didn't even remember it was, it was a lot it was a lot going on last year that that it's hard to remember everything that happened i guess yeah. i guess the, the final point i want to say is that the what i'd like to see the most out of this uh, especially three and just this summer because the summer is going to be super busy is I don't want to see new announcements. I just want more information on everything we have seen already. Mm, um, I don't know. I want both. Be, because I everything's both. everything's been pushed back because of everything that's going on. So more transparency. Where, yeah, so there's yeah. going to be that time at the end of this year, at the beginning of next year, that we're going to be getting so much shit coming out. And I want to see all that stuff. Um, fleshed out more at this E3 and just in the summer overall because I'm not sure if a lot of people have you know the I'm not sure if there is much well there's always new games being made but I'm not sure if there's much that people can announce now because we have so much stuff announced that isn't out yet so many things yeah. that we're still waiting for so many things that have been pushed back um, that we need to see more of and uh, and then there's so much rumored things that we need to see more of as well, or need to see properly announced. Uh, so that's the kind of stuff that I want to see come out of this this year, uh, because it's going to be so different than than any other year we've we've seen E3 as. Yeah. So, so notably, it would be different announcements. Uh, so there we go. E3 is back this year, fortunately. Yeah. And that's all we got for the big news articles. Kyle, take us into. The next one. All right. Well, uh, there's not a lot of new and notable stuff this week, but it's already out. The first one we have here is Pac-Man 99 is out 
All now, right, I now. need to play the and first Knight or not, eight to uh, uh, understand the story in this one. Yes. No, yes. I don't think I don't think you need to play Pac Man two through ninety eight. You just have to play the old OG arcade Pac Man and then play ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think the formula has changed very much across all the games. I think you're. You pretty also good. need to yeah, watch Godzilla King King of Monsters. Okay. You need to watch that first and then. Cool. Yeah, uh, and this is available through the Nintendo Switch Online service. If you have, yeah, that. the Nintendo Switch Online. Yes, is it, I it don't is know. free if you have the online. Okay. Uh, next up, Super Meat Boy Forever is coming to PS4 and the Five and the Xbox X, the SX and the S and Xbox One. <laughs> that's a, that's those abbreviations the, are so weird now. Yeah, yeah. It just it, Super Meat Boy Forever comes to just. The Xboxes. Yeah. yeah, there you go. The Xbox X, family. The X, the X apostrophe S. The X's. The X's. Uh, no release date on that one, I don't think. I'm not sure when. The, the Xbox family. Yeah. Um, Kyle, I'm sorry. You already know this, but Deathloop has been mm-hmm. delayed mm-hmm. to September 14th. So, I, does that, that game was a month out, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was like May something, I think. Like mid- That's so May. intense. I, I, this do, is, I know this it a, was May at some point. I don't know if that was the this last. This is a good thing. The last. This day. is a good thing because we have Returnal, Near Replicant, and Resident Evil Village. Deathloop would have just been devoured. Uh, I don't know. I would rather. Oh, have I don't think before. it would have been devoured. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I do. I do want to say. Want well, now. well, if you. I I did forget to write down the release the date for Patreon Super exclusive. Meat Boy, which is the sixteenth of April. So. Oh. Uh, Oh, okay, cool. April 16th that comes out that comes out soon I didn't know that it is I think already on the Epic Store yeah it was on but PC and Switch last year is it on I I'm, I'm okay. sorry guys but without without uh going into it Death Oop being delayed again only shatters my confidence in the game I don't think so interesting but uh, a delayed game is a good game. Uh, there it is. <laughs> you, you uh, add that, that to your bingo. Wait, wait. So, is that what so, the so Miyamoto. So wait. So, so, Cyber, so Cyberpunk was your game of the year last year. See, that one was not delayed enough. That, that is the thing. Man, that game, a delayed <laughs> game, is a is a good game. Man, Cyberpunk must have been the hottest game of last year. It definitely beat out Final Fantasy VII Remake. But anyways, That's not how that quote next goes. up, abandoned. <laughs> 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 what? Is that not how the quote goes? How does Alan it go? Is mis- uh, understanding no. it. <laughs> Uh, no, I know. A bad game is bad forever. A delayed game can be good. Something like that. Is that what it is? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, anyways, Abandoned, a brand new cinematic first-person survival horror game, ooh, was announced from Blue Box Game Studios, coming exclusively to PS5 in Q4 2021. Play. We're playing this. We're playing this. Well, game. Kyle, Kyle won't play it. Kyle will play it. I'm He's abandoned. I mean, he'll it. play it. He's looking forward to well, it. Well, Kyle. Kyle will play it in a room full of people with all the lights on, even in the rooms that he's not in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> because the more, because you can only be attacked by scary stuff in the dark, Kyle. If you have the lights on everywhere, where's the darkness going to get you from? But how am I going to play it in rooms that I'm not in? <laughs> no, you have well, lights Well, no, you'll play on. in one room, but you'll have the lights on everywhere because Every- if you're in a different room, yeah. the darkness will come from a different room and come get yeah. you. But if you have yeah. the lights on, it can't get you. There you go. Science. Um, and <laughs> lastly, Streets of Rage 4's DLC, Mr. X Nightmare, is coming out later this year with a new gameplay mode, new moves, new weapons, playable characters, and of course, the sweet, sweet music. Yeah. Is that, uh, is that uh, uh, the Resident Evil guy? That's what I thought when I read it, but... Uh, I don't think so. No, I, there's I don't a, think so. another Not character sure. in there, I believe. I, I played through Streets of Rage 4... Last year, I don't have the nostalgia for those games, so I didn't really understand who the characters were or what was well, going on. So I was just like, it's fine. And moved on. And, so I don't. I don't and like with that. that, the new and notable is now the old and noted. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. That means let's get on to the lightning round. We also have a, uh, only a few things here in the light, lightning round. So starting off, Apex Legends Season 9 might feature a ton of pedophile content. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Good. Uh, a lot of people like Titanfall, and I know a lot of people are playing Apex Legends, so good for them. Hopefully, hopefully this here. means... I, I, I do want to add one more thing on that. Hopefully this means that maybe they're 
hinting or at least trying to manifest the existence of the goodwill for a Titanfall 2 down the road? Just three? like, hey... Or, or three, or, yeah, three. Yeah, three. Titanfall 2. Uh, Ka Ka Kao, I... I'm glad you from you. There's already a <laughs> Titanfall 2. Right? What? It's already out? Totally. That guy. Yeah. That guy's totally not interested in Titanfall. That guy's guy totally. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Titanfall 2 is good. I played that. But to g yeah. give a, a Titanfall 3, maybe. Maybe. They're just yeah. like, yeah. remember this, guys? Yeah? Huh? Hopefully. Yeah. It does feel good to dream, doesn't it, Kyle? It does. <laughs> Indeed. Second up here, we have the PS5 was named the official console for the NBA 2K League. There you go. So is is that a tournament that they do? Maybe. <laughs> no, one <Sports. laughs> no one knows. Sports. Sports. Uh, I put it in here just to fill out some of these spots. Uh, third here, we have. So there will be a Resident Evil showcase on April 15th, hosted once again by Resident Evil super fan, super fan Brittany Brombacher. The Resident Evil Twitter account suggests that you join the reverse beta test while you wait. So take note, guys. But wait. Well, no, no. You got to read the <laughs> next one, though. So in other news, the Resident Evil reverse beta has been suspended due to <laughs> much making issues. <laughs> I saw that in the, in read, the, in the I, notes I, I, and I yeah. laughed out loud. Yeah, I know. I read that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> I read that and I was like, oh, those gotta be read back it's to back. Yeah. Just 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 straight away. Yeah. That's so great. That's I so think great. Like, so three days ago uh, it, uh they put out that, that Twitter thing and then two days ago news came out that man. it was suspended. So did you guys try to join the reverse beta before it was suspended or no? No, no. Ah uh, nope. No no. I wow. wanted to, but then it was suspended. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. She didn't want to wait for the showcase with the reverse beta. But yeah. <laughs> it wasn't possible. Oh, well. Exactly. Well, well that's all the lightning round news we have here. It's nice. Tough. This is a good week. It was yeah. like we, we had some big stuff, but not a lot, if that makes sense. You know? Yeah. Uh, Media that, episode. That, Media seemed, episode. that seemed like a lot. A lot of stuff to talk sure. about. The way the, there was a lot to talk about it. Not a lot True. of stuff, but a lot to talk for about. Sure. Man, for sure. You know? Uh, Detailed. what are you guys excited for this next week? Gino, let's start with you. I'm excited to, um, I think Crossplay is finally coming to Outriders I think this week. So I, I read uh, a bit before we started that it, it, it already is available. Is it out now? Yeah. Let's, uh, well, no, so, be, be excited now. So then I'm excited uh, to finally... Yes, it is. You're squad absolutely up. correct, Ignacio. There it is. Um, so I'm excited to squad up with friends on other consoles that I've been trying to. Uh, and I'm excited to continue playing that game that I continue... I forget the name of. Uh, times... Times... We'll have to scroll all the way back. Ta first Class Trouble. First Class Trouble. <laughs> That's what it's called. The it's game that Gino played game. but can't remember because yeah, it was so great. At, it's, it's, you know. Because so I just, I call play. it Among Us Bioshock. Yeah. I call it Among Us Bioshock. That's what I, yeah. That's what I call it. So I'm excited to continue playing that, my friends. There you go. There you I can't, go. I can't Google that. And Alan, <laughs> what about you? What are you excited for this week? I'm excited for nothing. Uh, another Ignacio in here. Huh? We got another Ignacio in Who here. Is this man? <laughs> because I, because I would say I'm excited for the Resume Showcase, but I'm not gonna watch it. Ooh. So oh yeah, yeah, I'm excited for that. There you go. So I'm there's there's the nothing that because I I don't I don't want to. I didn't watch that uh, gameplay thing of Resident Evil Eight. I just. So what are you excited for? You still haven't answered my question. Nothing. Well, Alan. Nothing. Uh, it to does eat. say Resident Evil Showcase. It isn't Resident Evil Village Showcase. This is true. I would but like I'm to interject. But I'm since assuming Island is not it's Red. I mean, I mean, like I, okay. I'm excited for the showcase if I see my Resident Evil for my baby Resi Four. That that yeah. I think is okay. what a lot of people uh, are expecting. Something to be announced with. Uh, yeah, really. Resident people Evil. are hoping. I don't think they should. They're, they're hoping. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know. Oh, and I and I officially started my 100% playthrough of Mario Sunshine, so I'm excited to play more there of that. There you go. See, uh, you have so stuff you're for excited you. about. Don't say you're not excited so about stuff. I do you. have something, but I'm not excited. 
Oh, see, it's a reference you guys won't get. Sad dog. It's yes. Sad. Do you get it, Gino? No. <laughs> you just damn it. You <laughs> got him. Ignacio. No, what what I is it? You. What's the gif? Nothing nothing on the outside, nothing on the inside. I do not get oh, it. Yeah. I do not get that gif. Neither did I. Neither did I. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what am I excited for? I'm finally getting shot number two. Hey. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. There you yeah. go. Good stuff. I'm getting that in at the end of the month. So. Nice. That's always exciting. Don't oh, have I forgot mine. to mention. I forgot to mention. I also want to continue uh, my excitement for Kena Bridges Spirit. So. I don't. There we go. I don't always. have my vaccine. Cool. Uh, I'm excited to finish playing through Outriders and yeah, start squatting up with some people. I think that'll be fun. Jano, you and I will have to. Uh, yeah, we got squat to squat yeah. up and play that. Yeah, we got to. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm excited for us to get our Patreon exclusive show scheduled so we can check back in on our uh, fantasy draft uh, thing because we have some some do updates you, and stuff. Do like you that. guys know who's so, winning right now? Uh, no, I don't. Know. I think it it's isn't. not you. It's not you. I don't know. I have no no idea. It's, who's on it top. can't be you. It can't be you. <laughs> Wait, no, I, I, didn't Gino have no, a game card? He did. He did. But Gino's not the one who's winning right now. Are you winning? Oh, you are. You're winning. I, I Why checked. are you winning? Why are I'm you winning? winning. Ah, Why? Ah, ah, what was the same? Oh, because of Monster Hunter ah, Rise. Exactly. Ah, I forgot about Monster yeah. Hunter Rise. <laughs> That's oh. right. I'm winning. Uh, oh. Meanwhile, here, every game that I pick is going to uh, I'm excited uh, to uh, shut uh, Alan up by the end of the, <laughs> the, 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 by the end of the year. Uh, that'll be good fun. Uh, there you go. Uh, Gino, where can the people find like you on the internet? Looks like I'll have to shuffle my games around. Uh, you can find me over on Twitter at Gino underscore Viteri. I'm currently having a huge feud, as you guys can see, with Greg Miller uh, of Kind of Funny. Uh, are, so are, check are we me out squatting there. Squatting up where... against Greg Miller? Do, do do we have to go fight him and beat be, be him up? No, Let's... absolutely not. He will destroy us all. He will destroy yeah. us all. I'll He'll fall here. Us. I'll fall on my own, uh, graciously. Yeah. Uh, Too bad your rave didn't his, come out before his. To his baseless attacks. Yeah. So um, uh, this uh, this following this weekend actually, you will see me on uh, Simply Sassy. So shout out okay, to cool. them. Uh, where oh, but I didn't publicly you record it last, uh, like two weeks ago? I recorded it a very long time yeah. ago, actually, and then uh. Greg Miller's episode came out before mine. Uh. But I, uh, I added on to it, and I publicly denounced him uh, for his baseless attacks. Yeah. Uh, so check that out uh, over on Twitter. I'll be retweeting that or whatever at Gino underscore Viteri. There you go, my friends. And Alan, where can they find you? And your hate for the witness. He actually oh, just you... like he just liked my tweet where I said, where I said I will publicly defend myself from these basic can, attacks. He just liked it. That's funny. You can always find me at the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash as as people now call it Azure PKK. Mm. People, people have been saying it Azure. Azure. Sounds so, fancy. Azure. And uh, you know, if you watch me on Twitch, you'll see my Twitter handle there. It's at at Alan Busby, where I don't publicly attack greg miller or defend myself from said defend greg miller. myself let's 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 uh that's the argument here i'm defending but myself. I'm not but i will attack greg miller because someday i will surpass him in trophy and trophies Ooh, that's not that's if you do that. not to, no you have to get down to his level not, if you're not. gonna do that that's a steep well one. i yeah. don't play i don't play like five yeah. minute platinums like one greg <laughs> miller does that's why greg will always be ahead of you <laughs> it's begun. We're well, in trouble. Some people take the long road. Greg Miller takes the short road. Wow. Okay. There you go. There you go. Ignacio. That's right. Can they find you? Well, they can find me on Twitter at Ignacio Rojas B. That's I G N A C I O R O J A S B. And I would say that me and Greg Miller are in a good, in a uh, we have a a good thing. We are not fighting. There you go. We. Oh, well. We're good, good for you. Hey, someone in my Twitch, my Twitch chat this morning, Ignacio. Mm -hmm. I mentioned your name, and they were like, they were like, Ignacio Rojas, and I was like, yeah. So they knew who you yeah. were. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Famous. That happens yes. once in a while. Look, I'm not that much. Ignacio. Look at that. That's happening. Uh, you guys can <laughs> find me at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter. Uh, I also am, I guess, in good standing with Greg Miller. I've 
barely ever interacted with him except for like getting his <laughs> tweets every now and then so hey greg what's up uh, <laughs> um yeah if you guys want to stay up to date with our shows we are at the whatnots on twitter uh so go like share subscribe you guys know the deal with all of that uh if you guys have some nice words to say we would love it if you would go rate and review us uh on itunes or spotify i guess spotify just recently passed uh apple podcast for the most uh like used podcasting app so interesting stuff there um but yeah that is about it this has been crossplay for this week so we will see you all next time bye coming for you gregory oh and now i gotta go back and play the witness